वेलकम बैक वेलकम टू दिस सेक्शन ऑन ऑब्जेक्ट ओरिएंटेड प्रोग्रामिंग अगेन इन द प्रीवियस सेक्शन वी अंडरस्टूड द फैक्ट दैट ऑब्जेक्ट्स हैव स्टेट एंड बिहेवियर हाउवर ऑल द ऑब्जेक्ट्स दैट वी हैड क्रिएटेड अंटिल नाउ हैड रियली सिंपल स्टेट दे आइदर हैड कपल ऑफ वेरिएबल्स रिप्रेजेंटिंग द स्टेट एंड हैड अ फ्यू मेथड्स रिप्रेजेंटिंग बिहेवियर इन दिस सेक्शन वी विल टेक इट वन स्टेप फर्दर वी विल क्रिएट a lot more variables representing this state and also we would talk about behavior and think about what are the methods you can create to represent the behavior we will also talk about an important concept called object composition the classes that we create can contain instances of other classes so the checking account here can contain a customer which is also another class that we have created we'll discuss about object composition and how you can create state and behavior while using object composition after that we would move into some of the most important concepts related to object oriented programming we will talk about inheritance why we need it what are the basics and we'll discuss a few puzzles about inheritance we will talk about an abstract class why do we need an abstract class and talk a little bit about practical uses around abstract classes after that we would get into interfaces interfaces very important concept and people confuse between interfaces and abstract classes we'll discuss how to think about a uh, interface and how it is really different from an abstract class we'll end the section talking about polymorphism I'm excited about this section because there are a wide range of topics that we would be talking about. I'll see you in the first step of this section. Until then, bye bye. Welcome back. In this video, let's look at a few of the basics that we discussed in the previous section on object-oriented programming, and also look at what are the things you need to think about when you are designing a class. Let's get started with the basics of a class, right? A class is nothing but a template. You create objects based on this template. So Ducati is a instance of the motorbike class. Honda is an instance of the motorbike class as well. These instances are called objects. So Ducati is an object, Honda is an object. The motorbike class has a member variable called speed. the ducati can have a value for that speed we are setting it to 100 here and honda can have a different value for that speed and this is called state of an object in this example we just have one member variable representing the state but you can have a number of member variables which are representing the state of a specific object the state of a object is nothing but what are the values that the member variables have at that point in time The important thing is the state can change, right? So initially the speed was 200, but at a later point in time we are increasing the speed or decreasing the speed. Now, how are we representing the state change? The state changing is happening through the methods that we expose. Over here, if you look at the motorbike class, we are exposing a number of methods to provide information about the state or to make a change to the state of this object. so these methods are called the behavior of an object so objects have a state which is what are the values for the member variables and a behavior that's basically the methods that are exposed by an instance of that specific object now typically whenever we are designing classes we need to decide three important things one is what is the state so what are the different variables member variables that would represent the current state of a motor bike here we have speed maybe you would want to have something like a color of a motor bike make of a motor bike or a wide variety of other variables to represent the state of a motor bike which gear is it in and all that kind of stuff right the second important decision that you need to make is what are the constructors how do you want to allow the construction of a motor bike in this example what we did was okay when somebody directly create a motor bike instance we said okay we will give it a speed of 5 or we can also create a motor bike by setting the initial speed in the next step we would discuss about a few other options you can think about when we are creating the constructors 
the third decision you need to make is behavior right what are the operations that you would want to allow on the object in the next step we would add a lot more state and also a lot more behavior into our objects in this step we quickly revise the important terminology class object state and behavior and also we discuss about the three important steps that you need to follow when you are thinking about any specific object what is the state what are the constructors how do you want to allow creation of it and what is the behavior what are the methods that can act on it in the next step we'll try and use this and design another simple class until then bye bye welcome back in the previous video we talked about a few important questions that you need to ask when you are talking about your classes right so the first one is what is the state that means what are the member variables you need to have and the second one is how do you want to allow creation of a specific object that is what are the constructors that you would want to allow third one is what is the behavior you would want to allow that's basically the member methods let's consider an example right a ceiling fan the fan here is not really a fan of a actor actress or a director what we are talking about is a ceiling fan which gives you a little bit of wind right that's the fan we are talking about so for this fan class you can think about what are the different elements that represent the state of a specific fan object you can think about how you want to allow construction of a fan object and you can also think about the behavior what kind of changes you would want to allow in the state of a fan class you can pause the video in here i have left out a few clues in here about how i think about it now i would recommend you to pause the video in here and also think about how you represent the state what are the different constructors you would want to have and what are the different behaviors that you would want to allow you can pause the video here okay let's start with the solution right so i said over here i said the state i am looking at is make radius color is on and speed so basically what we are doing in here is we are saying this is the manufacturer this is the radius of a wing of a fan and this is the color of the fan and this is whether it's on or off and if it's on or what is the speed so those are the different things that are important to represent the state but you might be thinking of a wide range of other stuff as well we'll use these variables to represent this state before we get into the constructors let's represent these in here right so i'm going to copy this let's create a new project i'll call it object oriented programming two that's the name i'm giving it and you can go ahead and click the finish button so this would create a project and over here i can actually go ahead and create a new java class right so new G java class i'd want to call this what do i want to call this i would want to call this fan runner right so as usual we'll go with the fan runner com dot in 28 minutes dot oops level 2 so let's use that as the package name and click finish right i could have actually created a main as well main control space okay now we have a main method which we can use to run so now i'll go ahead and say fan fan is equal to new fan right so let's create a fan class control 1 create fan okay i'll use the same package so i don't need a main so finish that's cool so we have the fan class right now now let's think about the state we would want to have these are all the variables so let's cr quickly create them so make um i would want to say private string make and radius i would want to actually represent using uh double is fine because it's not going to uh, change i'm not going to do a lot of calculations around it so double is fine if i am going to do calculations using it then probably big decimal would be the right choice for color private string color is fine and for is on how do you represent it think about it whether it's on or off right boolean and speed uh, let's say there are five levels and i would represent it Uh, for now using a byte because that's more than sufficient the speeds let's say can be 1 to 5 or something of that kind typically when we are doing a lot of programming like this we would use enums for speed we would use enums for color and maybe make as well at a later point in time we, when we talk about enums we would be discussing why enums and how enums for now let's use the basic data types right so let's go ahead now 
over here the first decision that we would need to make was the state so we are using these variables to represent the state of the object second important decision that we would typically need to make is how to allow creation of the objects right so how do you decide what kind of constructors do you want to allow the question you need to typically ask is what are the most important things that this object cannot live without right so a make is definitely needed because when i create a fan i should know the make and when i create a fan radius also is important right so can i really have a fan without wings so the radius becomes important and also the color right so when i create a fan i can say color is also mandatory right the fan might be off or on so this is not really important and the speed might be 0 to 5 right so it does not need to be 1 so when it's off the speed is 0 so it can be anything between 0 to 5 so speed is also not really important when i'm creating a fan the constructor i would want to create is at the basic level they should be able to have these three things specified so over here when we are creating the fan object we are specifying nothing in here but i don't think that's a good practice so because we are allowing creation of a fan without specifying the make without specifying the radius and without specifying the color so what we want to do is we would want to create a constructor public fan to which i would want to pass in string make double radius and string color this would ensure that anybody who's creating fan object would pass in this value so let's go ahead and implement this dot make is equal to make and this dot radius is equal to radius and this dot color is equal to color that's cool right so now we have the initial state of a fan ready but you'd see a compilation error because now the default constructor does not any exist as soon as you provide a constructor java will not provide the default constructor so we need to provide value so i'll say manufacturer one and the radius let's just say it's 0 0.34567 meters i mean does not really matter some value and fan uh, let's say the color of it is green we have established the state for a fan and we also established the constructor for the fan now i would want to actually print the state of the current object so what are the values which are present in the fan as of now right so typically how we would do that is this out fan right so let's try and print this it's printing the package name and the class and the hash code of it from memory what we want to print is the values so how do i make this print the values i can create a two string method right so public two string oops it should return a string back what i would want to return is a string of this format right so i would want to say make is some value comma radius is some value comma color is some value and we would want to have the value of is on and we want to have the value of speed right so that's basically all the values that you would want to have the thing we can do is use string concatenation i can say make um, plus i can put this in a string and plus radius and things like that but you don't want to do a lot of string concatenations because it creates unusual unnecessary objects the other way to do that is by using a string dot format method so i can say a string dot format it's one of the methods which is present in string so we specify the format in here and then you can specify the values so over here we would want to have make radius color and is on and speed and we need to specify where the values have to be used the first one is make percentage s it's a string radius is a double so we should use percentage f and color is a string percentage s is fine uh, is on is a boolean percentage b and speed is a integer percentage d so return string dot format what we are doing in here is we are providing a string representation of the entire object so we can see the entire state of the object just by calling the toString method whenever you try to do a system.out.println as long as you are ma matching this syntax right public string toString this method would be automatically called 
and the output from this method is printed. So let's see what happens. You can see now that make is manufacturer 1, radius is so and so, color is green, is on is false and speed is 0. So when we create an instance of the class, we are actually getting the default values, right? So for is the on and speed, this gets a default value of false and this gets a value of zero. That's cool because that's the state typically when we create a fan. In this video, what we are looking at is what is the state that you would want to represent a fan with and how do you want to allow the creation of a fan object. We also looked at how to print the current state of a fan, right? In the next step, what we look at is what are the different methods that we would want to allow to alter the behavior of a fan. Until then, bye-bye. Welcome back. In the previous step, we created a constructor for the fan and created a method to print the content of the fan, print the current state of a fan, right? So this is what we have right now. Now let's focus on the behavior. What is the behavior that I would want to allow on a fan object, right? So is there a chance that once I have an object of a fan, it's make changes or a radius changes, color changes? Nope, very little chance that any of these change once I have created them, right? So the two things which might typically change, whether it's on or off and the speed, right? So those are the two things on which we can expose behavior. So I can start off down here. So typically two string would be the last method in a class. That's kind of a convention. It's not really necessary. So now I can create methods to modify the ease on variable. So I can actually create methods saying public void is on and I can ask the consumer to pass in the value, right? I can say boolean is on and I can do something of this kind. This dot is on is equal to is on. So what would happen if in this kind of situation, the way it would work is if let's say I would want to fan dot set fan dot is on false right so that's the state and now if i print it is on would have a value of false or i can say is on true right and is on would have a value of true so this is one way of doing it but the way i like to do things is by thinking about the consumer right so instead of is on true or false i like this kind of methods much better so public void switch on and say this dot is on is equal to true and switch off this dot is on is equal to false from the consumer perspective i feel this kind of a syntax is much more usable so when we are thinking about behavior you are thinking about the consumer who is using your api so instead of saying is on you can say fan dot switch on Right? This is much more useful API for a consumer to read. And you can see that is on is right now true. Now, after that, he can say fan dot switch off. And we would see that after the switch off, the state of the fan is on becomes false. So this is kind of the way you need to think. Think always from the perspective of your consumer. What, what is the behavior that he would expect from your specific object? Now, the other thing I can change of this is the speed, right? So I can expose a simple method for changing the speed. So I can say public void set speed int speed. And actually, we are using a byte. So let's make it byte speed. This dot speed is equal to speed. So that's cool. Now let's do fan dot set speed 5. Let's typecast this to a byte to make sure that we make the compiler happy and say we are using a byte in here. So let's run this right now. Now you can see that the speed is 5, but when it's off, it's setting the speed remains 5, right? So now I can think about the behavior. When somebody switches off the fan, I'd want to actually set the speed to 0, right? I just need to add a typecast as well because I'm representing it as a byte. So set speed byte of zero. By default, this is int. 
So to make it a byte, I'm making it a typecast in here. So to convert this to a byte and we can use that, right? Similar to this, we can actually, when somebody switches on the fan, if you'd want to actually set a default speed, you can actually do that as well. So you can set default speed to five. Now let's run this. You can see make speed is five and when you make it off, speed is zero. In between, you can alter the speed, right? So I can set it to three. So after switching on, let's print it. And now the speed is becoming three and switch off after that we are printing it again. So let's see what would happen. So when this, when I switch on the fan, the speed becomes five. I'm making the change in the speed to three and I'm switching off to zero. So what we are looking at in here is what are the operations that I would want to allow on a fan and we are trying to implement them and also trying to implement the logic for them, right? So what we are doing is all the logic related to a fan, we are actually putting it inside the fan class itself. So the switch on not only turns on the fan, but also sets a specific speed. Switch off would set the is on to false and also set the speed to zero. So the important thing to realize is these are not just getters and setters. Typically, when people start thinking about objects, the only methods that they would expose from a specific object is getters and setters related to that. That's not really a good practice. You need to start thinking about how a consumer would be using your objects and create methods which make it easy to use your objects. In the last couple of steps, what we're trying to do is to apply what we have learned about designing a class, right? We need to think about the state, how do you want to allow the creation of the object? And also, we would want to think about what is the behavior you would want to allow. So we were trying to take that thought process and apply it to a fan class. I'll leave you with one exercise where you can think about a rectangle class, right? So a rectangle has a length and a width. You can think about what constructors you would want to allow the rectangle to have and what operations you would want to allow on a typical rectangle. Think about it and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, bye-bye. Welcome back. In this video, we'll discuss the exercise from the previous step. What we wanted to do is create a rectangle class and we talked about length and width and we wanted to think about how do we want to allow creation of those objects and what are the operations that you would want to allow. So let's get started with a new class, rectangle runner as usual. And I would add a main method and press enter to do a finish. This is cool. And let's directly start with creating a rectangle class. Rectangle, rectangle is equal to new rectangle, All right? So I'll do a control one, create a rectangle class. And I would, yep, I think that's cool. Let's do a finish. Now we have a rectangle class and we have a rectangle runner class. Now let's start thinking about, oops, typo in here, it should have been rectangle. So cool. So we have a rectangle class. The first decision you need to make is what is this state? So what are the different things that constitute the important things about a rectangle? Let's keep it simple and use an int. So int length, oops, and let's get a width in here, right? So when we create a rectangle object, can it exist without a length and a width? Nope. Right, so I would want to create a length and a width. So this is the constructor that I would need to allow. So control one, and I'll say create constructor, int length and int width. Because a construct, a rectangle without length and width does not really make sense, right? So they are mandatory. So the constructor I would want to allow is this length is equal to length and this dot width is equal to width. Let me just move these values up. Cool. So now we have length width and we have a constructor with the length and the width. Now, we thought about the state, we thought about creation of the rectangle. The next thing we want to do is think about the operations. The operations that I would want to typically do are maybe the current state of the rectangle, right? So we can create a two string, public string, two string and return the current state. That's one thing which we can do. Now, what are the other things that I can do? What are the other operations that I would want to expose on the rectangle, right? So typically, 
you might want to change the length and the width that's one thing you can do so for that you might expose getters on the length and getters on the width and setters on the length and setters on the width right so those are basic kind of operations so you can do all shift s or right click source generate getters and setters and you can choose length and width so this would generate the getters and setters right so that's the basic stuff we have get length set length get width and set width now what more operations do you want to allow the operations i can think of are probably calculating the area right so i would want to be able to calculate the area so i'll say pub int area so what's the area of a rectangle length into width that's the area right so return length into width and the other operation i can think about is perimeter of a rectangle right perimeter so return two into length plus width right so that's the other operation now let's go ahead and implement the two string return string dot format i want to have what's the way i would want so i'll say length width let's also include the area and the parameter perimeter in the state length again all of these are integers so i can say percentage d width percentage d area percentage d perimeter is also percentage d and the arguments that we need to pass in are length width now area is a method so area perimeter cool okay let's now see with the rectangle runner how things are so rectangle we are ready now i will say sys out rectangle and let's change the width and print the content as well so rectangle dot set rectangle dot set width i'll change it to 25 and let's see what would be the output after that let's see what would happen now okay length is 12 23 area is being calculated and the perimeter is also being calculated over here 374 so in this short video we discussed about a rectangle how you represent the state of a rectangle how do you represent the creation of the rectangle and what are the operations that you can allow Always think from the perspective of a consumer. So whoever is using the API, whoever is using the methods that you are exposing from your object, think from their perspective and create methods which would make it easy for them to use it. That's the essence of how you design your objects. Even though you might be thinking, hey, I am the one who's using these objects. Why do I need to think about from the perspective of somebody else? I think that good design always starts from thinking outside in. That's basically thinking from the perspective that somebody else is going to use this and thinking how they would want to use it. So kind of putting yourselves in the shoes of somebody who's using your class is the best way to think about the design of a class. In the next steps, we would move towards creating more complex objects. Until then, bye-bye. Welcome back. In the examples we looked until now, we were taking objects which contains simple values in them string double boolean byte right so we use simple values to represent the state of the object however state of an object can get much more complex than that you can have an object inside another object this is called object composition from this step on let's focus a little bit on object composition and look at the kind of complexities it would bring in. Let's get started with a simple example, right? So you would have a customer who has an address, right? So I can have customer class created. Let's call this customer runner. And I would say public static void main and finish, right? So this is as usual. Now I would go ahead and create a customer class is equal to new customer. 
and create class customer. Let's go ahead and do that. Cool, right? So we now have a customer runner, a customer class. Um, typically, when we talk about a customer, let's say a bank account customer or some kind of customer, right? So this guy would have a name, let's say private. This is kind of a primitive value, right? Uh, he has a name, but he might also have an address. The address is something which can be an object on its own, a class on its own address, right? So now what we are doing in here is called object composition because customer has an address and we will represent the address as another class, control one. And we are saying create class address. Over here, let's take a very, very simple address, right? So when we talk about addresses, they can get really, really complex. So line one, line two, line three, and so on and so forth. Let's just say we have line one, let's say city and a pin code. You can add in a lot more details to the address. Um, I mean, a country, state, and also line two, line three, and stuff like that. For now, let's st st stop with this. Okay, so this is called zip in most of the countries. So instead of pin code, I'm calling it zip. And now you'd see that this customer contains an address. This is called object composition. So customer object contains a reference to an instance of the address object, right? So when we design our classes, one of the important things that I would start with is what's the relationship between the different objects that are involved here? Customer contains an address. Now, if I take it a step further, I can even say a customer might contain a home address and a work address, right? So now this makes it much, much more complex. When we design our construction of the object, so this is representing the state of the object. So the state of the object for customer represents a name, a home address, and a work address. Now, when I talk about creating a customer object, now I would need to start thinking about more details. So whenever I create a customer, do I need an address always? So is home address mandatory when I'm creating a customer? If it is mandatory, then I would include it in the constructor. If it is not mandatory, then I would not include it in the constructor. For example, let's assume it is mandatory. So public customer, and I can actually start saying string name, comma, address, Let's say home address is mandatory, work address is not really mandatory. So I would start with something of this kind. So I would say this dot name is equal to name and this dot home address is equal to home address. Similar to the earlier steps, we would also think about what are the operations that we would need to allow, right? So for a customer, what are the operations that you would want to allow? So let's say once a name is set, you don't really want to allow changing a name. Let's say home address, you'd want to allow certain modifications and work address, you'd want to allow certain operations. So you can actually create methods for them. So let's create getters for them. So all shift s or right click source generate, generate getters and setters. I would not want to generate getters and setters for name. I would want to only generate getters and setters for home address and work address. So you now have operations which are defined. So let's pick this and move this below operations. So now somebody who creates a customer can create it with a name and a home address. And when the home address changes, they can do set home address. And if they want to add in a work address, they can actually say set work address as well. That's cool, right? So now address, um, now we need to think about how do we want to allow creation of an address, right? Let's assume to keep it simple that all these are mandatory. I can generate the constructor, right? So all shift S, right click source, generate constructors using fields and I would use all these three fields and now we have a constructor with all these three fields present. So whenever we think about a class and creation of a class, we think about what are the important things that are essential and what are not essential, we would probably get, create a setters for that. In this example, we assumed everything is important. Now you'd also think about, okay, you'd want to allow modifications of a li line one city or zip. I think I would not want to allow modifications. If somebody wants to uh, update the address, they can create a new address object and set it as the address to the customer. If I look at the customer runner class, there's a compilation error because we changed the 
customer creation process. You can try and pause the video in here and try and create a customer object with a address value and the name and see if you can do it on your own. Now, let's go ahead and try and do this. So first thing I would want to do is to have a customer, I would need to have a name, right? So I'll put name as Ranga and we would need to pass in a home address. So home address, so home address, I'll create an address object. So address, home address is equal to new address of, we have a line one and we have a city, let's say it's Hyderabad and we need to pass in a zip, right? So let's say 500035 is a zip. So this is how we can create a customer object, right? Now, if I want to set a work address, customer.set work address, I can do work address and I can create another instance for the work address. Let's say it's a line one for work. And let's say I'm working in Hyderabad and let's say in a different pin code. So this is how I can actually set a work address, right? So what we are doing in here is we created simple instance of the address and we created a customer with that address. We created work address and set the work address into the customer as well. Now, if I print the customer, what would you see? Customer. We did not create a two string, so it would print the customer entirely. So what we'll do is we'll also create a two string, simple two string. So we'll start with the address, public string, two string. And let's return very simple one for now. Let's keep it very simple. Line one plus space plus city. You can also use a string dot format to format it in a much better way. For now I'm keeping it very simple and returning the concatenation of everything back. And in the customer, let's concatenate public string to string and in the customer it, we have work address and home address so let's do using string dot format string dot format first let's decide the format so let's customer has a name so let's print the name first and after that customer has a home address let's print that next and next, he has a work address. Let's print that after that, right? So values that need to be passed in are name, um, home address, and work address, right? So it's it's quite simple, right? So you can you should be able to work this out very easily on your own. And over here, name is a string. Um, home address is an object. We would want to get the string representation of it. So percentages, work address is also an object. So I'll put percentage S. So what we have in here is very simple piece of code, right? So we are printing string dot format this. Uh, let's see what would happen if I run this. Okay, now it says name Ranga, home address line one, Hyderabad 500035, work address line one for work, Hyderabad 500078. That's cool, right? So that's uh, how object composition is supposed to work. What we are doing in here is simple object composition, right? So we are creating an address and setting it into the customer. We're also creating a work address and setting it to the customer as well. If I actually print it, print the customer before this, you would see that work address would be null. So if I actually run this again, you'd see that, you can see that the work address here is null. The important thing to get out of all these series of videos about object-oriented programming is the way we are approaching object-oriented design, right? So first thing is we would decide the classes, then we would decide the composition, how each com class is composed. Over here, we decided the customer would have two instances of the address class, that's called composition. And then we would decide about how you'd want to allow creation of the objects. After that, you'd start thinking about the different operations that are involved. The focus behind these steps has been to get you initiated with object-oriented programming thinking. So we are creating simple classes, simple operations, and now we were looking at object composition. Before moving into more complex object-oriented stuff, we will look at a simple exercise in the next video. Until that step, bye-bye. Welcome back. In this quick exercise, let's do a exercise on object composition. So let's talk about a book. A book has an ID, name, and an author. 
I mean, we can create actually author as a separate class on its own, but let's keep it simple. Let's say author, we only store the name and it's a string. We'll also store a list of reviews for a book, right? So each review has an ID, description, and a rating, right? So let's represent rating using an int, description as a string, and ID as a int as well. So this is the kind of code that I would want to do, right? So I would want to be able to create a book, passing in an ID for the book, the name of the book, and the author, and I would want to be able to add in reviews. So a book can have multiple reviews, so you can call the I review method multiple times to add reviews on a book, right? And at the end, when I print system.out.println book, it should print the content of the book and the reviews associated with it. You can pause the video here before you can look at the solution. Now, let's get started with the solution for this problem. I've created three classes, book runner, book, and review. So book runner is just the main method. So this contains exactly the code as we saw in the description of the problem, right? So it contains the book. So the if you look at the book constructor, it's very simple, right? So you have an ID, name, and author passed in. So we have a field called ID, name, string, author, string as well. The interesting part of this is the reviews. So because reviews are multiple, so the relationship between book and the reviews is one to many. One book can have multiple reviews. So what we are doing in here is storing the reviews as an array list. So I'm initializing the array list right here, new array list. And in the add review method, what we do is we add the review passed in to the reviews. The add review method takes in a review and adds it to the array list. And the review class is quite simple, right? So you have an ID rating and description and we have the constructor set getting all these values and setting it into the local fields. In each of these classes, we have a simple two string method, which is just concatenating the values and returning them back, right? So if I run this, you can see uh, that I have a book, ID, name, author, and a few reviews for the book as well. In the next step, let's move into more complex things related to object-oriented programming. Until then, bye-bye. This video is part of a Java course with more than 250 steps helping you become an expert on Java. You can find the complete course details in the description of the video. Along with it, you can also find the details of a free PDF with 200 pages of awesome code examples in 28 minutes, creating great programmers.